We're here today to do another example of an optimization problem. So in this one, we want to build a square based box shaped shipping crate. So I'm going to start by drawing a picture of this because this helps me visualize what I've got going on in this situation. So we've got a shipping crate and I apologize already that my drawings are not usually super perfect, but they don't have to be. So we've got this shipping crate here, and it's got a closed top, I believe. Let's continue reading the question here really quick. So we want this to be a square-based box-shaped shipping crate. So I'm going to really quickly, before I forget, that the base is square, so that the length and the width of the base down here, our length and our width, need to be the same. So maybe at the same time here, we'll say that X is the length and width of the base, and that we'll call Y the height of the box. Or a crate, maybe we'll call it a crate because that's what it calls it in the problem of the crate. So we need the crate to have a volume of 16 cubic feet. So remember, volume is length times width times height. So we need that volume to be 16. Our length and our width are both x, and then our height is y. So we know that we need it to be true that our volume is 16, and that's going to be x squared times y. So this actually right here is a constraint. Or another way that I like to say that is this is a restriction that we have on our situation. That whatever it is that we make for our length and width and height of this box, we need for its volume to be 16. So this is something that has to be true for whatever dimensions we end up picking. The material for the base costs $6 per square foot, and the materials for the top and the sides, okay, there it is. It does have a closed top. And so we've got the materials for the top and the sides cost $3 per square foot. What dimension should we make the shipping crate to minimize our cost? So I like to kind of also break this up a little bit, you know, sort of a piece at a time so I don't get overwhelmed with, you know, everything that I have to find. So number one, we're trying to minimize, so let's get correct spelling here, minimize cost. So our cost is going to be the cost of the base, because that is more expensive, plus the cost of the sides and the cost of the top. But we could, if we want, kind of wrap these two into one thing, because that's all going to cost the same. The material for the top and the sides is $3 per square foot, so we can kind of treat those the same. And then we've got the cost cost for our base is $6 per square foot. So it's kind of good, like I said, just to kind of treat this a little bit at a time and think about, all right, what's it going to cost us to make the base of this? Well, the cost to make the base, it's going to be the area of the base times how much our materials cost, $6 per square foot. And then we'll put plus the cost of sides and the top. We'll just leave that there for a second. We'll figure out the base first. Well, the area of the base, that's x times x, and then the cost of our materials for the top is that $6 per square foot. In terms of your units, hopefully this makes sense, that here we're going to get square feet. Oops, and I left off on my units here. It's $6 per square feet. And our units on our $6 here, $6 per square feet. So those square feet that we get from our area is going to cancel with our square feet and our cost and just leave us with a dollar amount. So the cost of our base, to figure it out, it's going to be that x times x times 6. We can do a similar thing for the sides and the tops. It the tops. There's one top. The sides and the tops. So we've got x times y, that's the area of a side, 
and then times that $3 that it costs per square foot to make a side. But we also have four total sides. There's si four sides to this guy. So we'd either have to add that x times y times 3 four times, or we can just multiply it by 4. Plus, we've got our top which the area of the top is back to x times y, but the top we're using that $3 per square foot versus our $6 per square foot. So let's get all of this writing off of here and see what we really have. So we have 6x squared for that first term, that's our area of our, or the cost of our base. And then we've got 12xy, that gives us the cost of our four sides all together. And then 3x squared gives us the cost at the top. We can do one more little bit of simplifying here. And so we get 9x squared plus 12xy by combining our like terms. And here's our cost function. So this is what we want to minimize. So now we have that little bit of a problem here that we've got an equation that's in terms of two variables. And we want to take its derivative. So that's where that restriction that we have comes in our 16 equals x squared y. We can solve that for y and plug this 16 over x squared in for our y value. And then we'll have our cost function just in terms of one variable. All right now there's a little bit of simplifying we can do here. All right we've got an x on the top here and we've got an x squared on the bottom, so we can cancel one of the ones we have on the top with one of the ones that we have on the bottom. We also could do our 12 times our 16, and that gives us 192. We have 192 over x. Now, if we want to take the derivative of this, it's a little bit easier to do that if we write this as 9x squared plus 192 times x to the negative 1. So now we've got this so that we can take our derivative. So we get 18x minus 192 x to the negative 2 power. We need to set it equal to 0 because we need to find those critical points. Where do we possibly have minimums and maximums? And at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that negative 2 exponent and put that on the bottom of a fraction as an x squared. And we need to solve this for x. So we need to get rid of that x squared on the bottom of our fraction. So we can do that by multiplying through by x squared. Also, a quick side note about this. We should always kind of take a quick look about when these um, derivatives are undefined, because that's a point that we want to pay attention to, because that's a possible critical point. But this, our derivative here is only undefined at 0. And 0 is not a reasonable amount for x, because that would mean that the base of our box is 0 by 0. So we don't need to worry about that. That doesn't make sense in the context of our problem. But now we're down to this 18x to the third minus 192. And we need to solve for x to the third. So we'll sub or add 192 to both sides, divide by 18, end up with 32 thirds. And that's equal to x cubed. And then we're going to take the cube root of 32 thirds. And that's what our x value is going to be. Now, if we were doing this as a Newton Alta problem, here is our exact answer. And remember, x, well, it's nice that we defined our variables because I need to remember what x is. x is our length and width of our base. We do need to find the height of our crate because we want to find our dimensions. So we need x and y. But I think I also want the approximation for this, just so I know kind of what this means in terms of feet. So I went ahead and did get the approximation for it, and it's about 2.2 feet. And the y value, we can get that back up here from our equation that we have in pink, because y is equal to 16 divided by x squared, because we need to have that volume of 16. So for this one, our exact answer would be taking that x value that we got. Sorry, my handwriting got a little bad there. 
and putting it into that equation, that 16 over x squared. So we get that cube root of 32 divided by 3 squared over 16. And this is our, again, exact answer. If I was doing this in Newton Alta, this is actually exactly how I would type it in. I wouldn't try to simplify it at all. I just have that as my exact answer. And this is approximately 3.3 feet. So our crate is going to have a width of about 2.2 feet, a length of about 2.2 feet, because we've got a square base, and then a height of about 3.3 feet. And this is going to be our dimensions that will minimize our cost.